Welcome to Jared Scott Outdoors, your source in the field for local outdoor news. This week on Jared Scott Outdoors, I'm showing you some videos of some really neat animals. And essentially what's happened is, of course, as I go out into the field, whether it's hunting or fishing or what have you, sometimes we're very unsuccessful. So much so that I don't even really have the chance to turn the camera on. Sometimes I come back with a little bit of footage, but footage that just doesn't pertain to whatever it was we were out doing. And you know, that happened just yesterday. I came back, we were hoping to do one thing, and instead I got footage of a completely different animal. But it was so cool that I thought, God, I need to show that to you. And thinking back on that, I realized I've got lots of times when that happened, when I just didn't have the opportunity to show you some footage of other really neat animals that we got because it just didn't pertain to the show. And so it's just sitting there on my computer and nobody's seeing it. And so why not show that to you? And so after having a handful of unsuccessful outings recently and needing to show you something, I want to show you some of this footage that is really fun to see that I just haven't shown you. And so most of this, a lot of this is going to be stuff you haven't seen. So we're going to start off with a time that I went out a few weeks ago on a mountain lion hunt. We didn't find any mountain lions, had nothing to chase. However, I did spot a bighorn ram and I snuck in to see how close I could get just to get some footage of it. So let me start with that. Again, I'd gone out with a friend looking for mountain lions, which starts off by just finding tracks of one. As we hadn't found any during the course of the entire day, we ended by hiking up a couple different ridge lines to look for tracks higher up. As I went up on my own up one ridge, I spotted a ram bedded up at the base of a tree. It was in the area I'd planned to go to anyways, so I tried sneaking in to get some footage of it. As I was slowly working in, I was caught by a ewe that I hadn't noticed before. It had no doubt been watching me for a while and finally stood up and quickly spooked, which got the ram up and moving as well. So with that, I thought my chance to get good footage was over. What I didn't expect is that the ram, which only jumped up because the ewe did, got curious. It was unsure of what I was, and so it started working its way towards me as it really appeared to want to figure me out. I was surprised when it kept coming and eventually got to within 60 yards. When it perched above me on the rock ledge, it and the ewe were in a cool place to just video from, and so I just kept the camera rolling. They watched me and me them for several minutes. In fact, in the end, it was me that started walking off because by the time I'd left, they'd actually started feeding again. After leaving the bighorn sheep, I noticed the sun was getting closer to setting, which also helped to create an amazing sight. All right, so here we are. We're out looking for mountain lion tracks. And, uh, and actually on the other side of the canyon, sounds like the hounds have picked up something. They're starting to make a bit of noise, but what I turned the camera on for more specifically was this incredible view I've got down below me. Um, you're seeing, you know, a, a, sun, a, a ray of sunlight shooting down and that's not a camera glare like it usually is when you see that glare off a, a camera that's panning. But you've actually got the layer of clouds below me. Um, you can see the mountaintops above the clouds. And then the sun is coming down, reaching through the clouds and then it's shooting that ray down below and there's so many water frozen water crystals in the air that it's picking that up um, anyways it's a beautiful scene out here right now you know middle of the winter we're out here hiking our tail ends off just trying to find something and at least i got to see something beautiful the mountain lion hunt may have been a bust but the trip wasn't watching these water crystals sparkle in the sunlight was a great way to end the day Another example of finding the unexpected happened when Mike Anderson and I were archery hunting elk. We were having a horrible day as far as finding elk goes, and finally spotted what I thought were elk on a distant knob on a ridgeline. Since they were in a perfect spot to set up on them, Mike set up on one point of the ridge just below the knob, and I circled around to the other side to push them his way. I figured if I went in bugling like a big bull, the elk and any bulls that were with them would probably pick up and move away from me, bugling as they went, and that would let Mike know where they were so he could intercept them. Well, when I got to the point I'd seen them, I was kind of confused because I hadn't had any elk answer my bugles. And on top of that, if you've been where elk have been bedded down, you know that they leave a pretty strong smell, and I hadn't smelled a single elk. As I stood right where I'd last seen them and saw no sign of elk having even been there, suddenly animals spooked from in front of me and started running. It turned out what I thought were elk was really a bachelor group of bighorn rams. 
Quickly turning on the camera, I caught some footage of a couple rams as they stared at me right on the edge of some cliffy stuff. When they took off, I ran over and got just a couple seconds of all the rams as they ran down the mountain away from me. So here they are in slow motion. As you can see, a group of several nice rams. Why was this so unexpected? Well, in all the years of hunting this unit, I've never seen a ram. In fact, there isn't even a hunt for rams in this unit. Well, from a mile away, I just assumed that those were elk butts that we were looking at. As you saw, it was, oh, five or six bighorn rams. Some really nice ones. I have never seen a bighorn ram in this unit. Um, I've seen a couple ewes a long time ago, never seen a ram. That's amazing. And it was several miles away where I saw the ewes and that was years ago. So that was fun, that was cool. Keeping it with the bighorn ram topic, there was a day I talked my wife into going shed hunting with me to try a spot I'd never been to. We would found a few sheds when I stumbled across what most likely is a once in a lifetime find. All right, so I've got to set the stage here a little bit. I came out with my wife, which is a rare occasion to come out with my wife to do some shed hunting. She wanted to get out of the house, so we came out to just a new area. And as you can see, we've picked up some sheds. I really haven't been planning on recording this for the shed hunting episode, but I just came onto something that I'll tell you what, my wife was even surprised as much as I was hooting and hollering. So I got to show you this, check this out. Tell a bighorn ram. This is a, a find of a lifetime for me. Um, I, I do know a few people that have found a couple of these, but I really never expected to find a ram. As you can see, it's well past the full curl on this side. It's broomed off on this side. He's been dead for several years, just sitting on this mountainside. But uh, check that out. I'm just I'm tickled pink, as my wife can can uh, can agree with. But uh, these are really heavy. This is something now to pack off the mountain. It's going to add a lot of weight onto my pack, but man, I'll do it. The funny thing is, we found these sheds down low, and I thought I wanted to check up high to see if there was any sheds. We just got into this nasty stuff, nasty hillside, and so now we were just trying to cut across to get down low again. And I was really feeling bad for coming up here, but I'm not feeling bad anymore. With bighorn rams being fairly rare here in Idaho and them being classified as a once in a lifetime hunt species, do you know if there was anything I had to do with the ram skull I found? In most situations, any animal you find that had died naturally can be kept. This includes moose, deer, elk, and even bighorn rams. However, bighorn rams do require a little more work in order to keep them legally. If you find one, basically you just have to take it to any Idaho fishing game office to have it officially recorded. They'll ask for the location of the find or the kill if it was harvested from a hunt so they can keep track of the sheep herds and their progress. The ram is then roughly aged by the amount of growth rings and the length and circumference of the horns is measured and recorded. Then the last thing that'll be done is they'll place an official numbered tag or marker in the horn. This is done by drilling out a small section and the marker being hammered into the hole. It's done in an area not easily seen in case the ram is mounted. With the tag embedded in the horn, I can now have possession of the skull and horns legally. This once in a lifetime find now sits in my office where I can enjoy seeing it on a daily basis. There was another time when I was shed hunting that I was surprised by what I saw. This was several years ago before airing an HD video and the year before wolf hunting became legal in Idaho. Look carefully on the edge of that snow patch. What do you see? That's actually a wolf I happened to find. As I walked toward it, it saw me and trotted off as I tried my best to focus the camera on it. It barked at me several times, sounding just like a big dog. It wasn't until I got home that I realized what I had not seen. 30 or 40 yards away from the black wolf on the snow was a white wolf. I'll move the screen up a little so you can see where it happened to get into the video screen a couple times while I was trying to stay focused on the black one. Had I known there was two wolves, I may not have been so brave walking right at the other one. I then went to where the wolves were and found that they had recently killed a cow elk. 
While it did look a little bloody, all they really did was peel the hide off some of it and then ate only the rear leg meat. From what information I could find out, it sounds like this might be a new breeding pair that recently located in the area. Where is this? You may be surprised to find that as the crow flies, I saw these wolves only 13 miles from the city of Idaho Falls. Alright, now let's switch gears. I want to show you a time that my son Riley and I spotted some mountain goats while camping near some high mountain lakes on a scout trip. Wanting to get footage of the goats, he and I grabbed my camera and some water and headed on up the slope to see if we could get closer. From a ways off, we watched them slowly feeding across the mountain near the top, probably about 1,500 feet above us, so we were in for a good hike. Aside from having to gain so much elevation, it wasn't really hard to get within a few hundred yards of them without being seen, but once to this point, there really wasn't much to use as cover as we tried to get closer. We used a few big rocks and the random bushes as best we could and did get to probably just over 100 yards. From here, there were so many goats that we had to keep an eye on that it became near impossible to get any closer without being seen. So we just got comfortable and watched them for a bit. The thing that stood out to me the most was how they were obviously losing their winter coat. I have found big clumps of mountain goat fur in the past, and so now, seeing how their winter coat was just coming off in big chunks, it made sense why I found it how I did. So in reality, they weren't the prettiest goats in this condition. That being said, we still enjoyed watching them. There turned out to be seven goats, four nannies, three of which each had a kid. One memorable experience was when I was out elk hunting with my friends and kids. While the others worked our way, my daughter Aubrey and I sat up in some trees in case they spooked something our direction. Sure enough, about a half hour into it, I heard something breaking branches as it was coming our way. Once I saw motion, I drew back, ready for an elk to break through towards us. Surprisingly, it was a mule deer buck that showed up. It passed right between Aubrey and I. While you can't see it yet very well, it was a pretty nice 3x4 and still in velvet. While I was tempted, I finally decided I wasn't ready to fill my deer tag yet and end today's elk hunt. As it neared where Aubrey was, I had to aim my arrow down a little, but it was looking my way so I couldn't move very much. Once it turned and started towards Aubrey, I let the arrow down and just videoed the deer. Look closely and you'll see the buck head right towards Aubrey. You can see Aubrey at the top right of the screen. Surprisingly, Aubrey actually waved at the deer as he got close and that stopped it dead in its tracks. After a few moments, it bounded away and headed on up the ridge. All I could do was watch and wonder what Aubrey thought of the experience. As you saw, I had a buck come in about 10 yards away from me. He, his horns were in velvet. It was really cool, but I didn't want him to get spooked and scare off our elk, so I kind of waved at him and he bounced off. I was actually with Aubrey again, except it was a different year and this time we were hunting elk with a rifle. When we ran into a group of several bucks, most of them were just average bucks, but one of them was a solid four point. Not very wide, but it had deep forks and just an all around good looking buck. We spent several minutes watching them, and they us, at just a hundred yards or so away. Luckily for them, and unluckily for us, the general deer season didn't start for a couple more days. All we could do was watch and wish. We did go back later when the deer season was going, but didn't find a single buck. Keeping with the deer, several years ago when I was cross country skiing with Mike Anderson, we had done miles and miles of skiing making a big loop back toward the truck when we spotted some bucks off in the distance. They disappeared into a draw, but about 15 minutes later when some elk got my attention, we found that the bucks were actually near the elk. At first we just saw a couple nice bucks, but suddenly the two biggest bucks I've ever seen walked out of the brush. As you can tell, these two bucks are monsters. The big one in front is the widest buck, well over 30 inches wide, but oddly it was only a three point buck. While not as wide, the one behind it had huge mass as well with four deep points on the left, but possibly only three on the right. It also was nearing that 30 inch mark. Either way, these were both two impressive bucks and seeing them made our day. As they went into the leafless aspens, we scooted on out of there hoping they wouldn't see us. Switching our attention to elk, once again, many years ago I was with Mike Anderson looking for coyotes when we spooked a group of bull elk we didn't even know was there. They came running out of some trees below us. The crazy thing that really caught our attention was seeing an elk that had already shed just one antler. 
The cool thing was how it obviously drove this bull nuts. I'm sure when one side fell off, it really made it off balance and lopsided. We watched as it ran off, shaking its head back and forth, trying to get the other to fall off. I only have a little video of it, but we watched them until they were about a mile away and bedded back down, and noticed that it shook its head the entire time it went that way. Crazy thing was, even with all that shaking, the antler never did fall off. Well, I was sure it would fall off sometime that day, and so the next day I went back to where the elk had bedded up, and it still hadn't shed the antler. In fact, we didn't even find the first one that I assumed had dropped off near where we'd first spooked them. But this video clip is really good at showing us what the elk and deer probably do once one side falls off, which is why many times you'll find sets near each other. So as you can see, you just never know what's gonna happen in the outdoors, which is one of the reasons it makes it so much fun. On another trip, I was out with a friend and we were hunting one animal, but as we, as we were going through, he said, hey, I, I saw three elk bedded up in these trees and one of them looked really big, just had a really big body. And so we stopped and watched and sure enough, they kind of got up, they started feeding a little bit and one of them was a toad. And when it actually cleared the brush so that we could see it better, it turned out to probably be the biggest bull elk I have ever seen. A seven by seven and just super massive. And next to these other two smaller five points, you could really see how big this thing was. And so let me show you that footage. As I said, we spotted the three elk earlier, but it wasn't until the bigger bull was more visible that we started to see just how big he was. We first spotted an extra point on one side and then found that it had a matching point on the other. You can see the extra points, probably about 10 inches long, flaring out to each side. It had huge seconds and thirds, while all the other points were very strong as well. Add on an extra 20 inches from those extra seventh points, and you have a bull probably in the 370 to 380 class range. Those two younger bulls only help to show just how big this bull really is. Seeing this big elk was definitely the highlight of the day. Well, that's going to wrap up this episode of showing you some of the unexpected things that has happened to me over the years when I'm out in the outdoors. And that's, that's one of the main things that makes being in the outdoors so much fun. Whether you're backpacking, hunting, hiking, fishing, it really doesn't matter. You know what your goal is, but you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what you're going to see or what you're going to experience. That's why it's so much fun to head out. So hopefully that got you guys excited to maybe make some of your own plans. Get your kids out there and just see what happens when you head out. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to the Jared Scott Outdoors YouTube channel.